video. Welcome back. In the second half of the week, started out with uh, Devin and Zach laying up the uh, lower half of the dash here. So here you can see they're laying down the first layer of carbon fiber. And this is a pretty simple layup because there's no uh, core involved. So just a, um, I think it was just two heavy plies and one medium ply. And here you can see they've got it under vacuum uh, already. So that one wasn't too difficult to lay up. And that's kind of how most of the parts should be. They're just, you know, fairly straightforward. Anyway, so that one's done. And so onto the oven. And as you know, we decided to try out an electric heater. And so here we have it set up and just blowing in through a ducting there into um, the enclosure. And uh, it actually worked fairly well, but it got to a point where it just couldn't get any hotter because we're just, you know, pushing ambient air in there. And obviously it has to bleed out some of the gaps that we have. And that's about the best we could do is 110 degrees there. So we had to start rethinking that. And meanwhile, I went over to Brit's shop to pick up the radiator. And he was just uh, had to weld on a couple of tabs that I took over at last minute. And so here you can see he's uh, just using the TIG there and welding those tabs onto the radiator. And he also uh, welded on the inlet and outlet pipes and drilled those through for us. So we've got basically mounting brackets there to hold the, the fan, electric fan on, and then mounting brackets to hold it, you know, onto ultimately the firewall. And then uh, the inlet and outlet pipes. So I'm trying to pick up his welding skills, but <laughs> it's one of those things that's going to have to take a long time to get uh, decent at welding, especially with aluminum, it's very tricky. Um, and, you know, what he's doing there is fairly straightforward because it's, you know, horizontal, but when you start welding um, angles and verticals and things like that, it's much more tricky. So Brit's turning out to be a great resource for us with respect to all our welding needs. So that's um, a help. And here you can see um, finished product I'm back in our shop now. And also too, there's the brackets um, that are going to hold that into place, the angle brackets that you'll see um, shortly once I get that mounted up. Um, so yeah, happy about how that one is turning out. And obviously it's an experiment to see if it's going to be enough uh, cooling for the prototype but you know we only have so much room initially um, with you know the air that's going to come in the inlet and uh, there you can see the brackets. So the next step was to drill the holes in those brackets and also on the tabs on the radiator and get that mounted as you can see here and so that's uh, turned out nicely so making progress on the engine and with respect to all the uh, goodies I had for the turbos they were coming out from California and they got to within 30 miles of where we are here in Georgia and got damaged somehow and now being shipped all the way back to California. So I've got the company actually reshipping a new set out to us. Um, anyway, thanks FedEx for uh, messing that up. You've cost us a week. So anyway, that's a bit of a delay. So this is the front half of the intake uh, tray that was actually laid up um, earlier in the week. And as you can see, it's been released there. And so that one just needs to be trimmed off around the edges there and a little bit more cleanup um, before we can start sort of fitting that one into place and you'll see more of that in a coming episode and you'll also get to see kind of what all those shapes are all for and you might recall last time the guys had started the layup for the first of the upper wing skin molds so here this is the next day and this is Wednesday and so they're uh, putting down the upper layers of uh, fiberglass on top of the core pieces there and uh, here you can see they're getting it all bagged and just starting to um, pull a vacuum on there to uh, take all the air out and get that going. So again, similar to the last one, just uh, they lay the tacky tape, which is the green stuff, all around the outside edge of the platform there um, to create a good seal and then put the bag over that and seal it off. And then there's three different uh, vacuum hoses hooked up to that so it can uh, pull the air out. Uh, fairly quickly much more efficiently than just using one and you can see just slowly it's pulling in there and getting the vacuum on there so uh, that one uh, had a good bag on there didn't have any problems and here's that part that makes up the underside of the glare shield and uh, as you can see now it has been released so just lifting it up there you can kind of see underneath there and that big big area there that's what's going to be the instrument panel there and then of course you've got the, um, the little stick out there for where the autopilot head will be and obviously the glare shield will be over the top of that 
So on the 3D printer, I created another one of these small sample ribs, which is you know really tiny, but this time I put some radiuses on the edges, which is more in line with what we actually have on uh, regular parts or regular ribs. And then uh, we laid up a mold over there. And unfortunately, I didn't, I forgot to get video of the solution or the final of that, but it actually came out well. So moving on now to doing uh, full size ribs. So back to the heater, we actually put the whole uh, heater inside the enclosure and ran it like that and it actually did really well but it has a safety um, over temp switch and it finally cut off. So what we decided to do was to split it apart and override that switch, take the, uh, the motor for the fan out because we didn't want that getting too hot and sort of separate the whole part so the heater would be inside the enclosure, the fan motor would be outside but the blade would be inside. So this is what we did, basically created this board setup and uh, to see how that would work. And here's the oven basically just with the back end open. You can see we've got the main spar in there so we have a little bit of thermal mass uh, to heat up in there. And uh, you see there's some fans that are hanging from the ceiling there. Those are just to keep the air circulating as well. So here you can see we got the board mounted there and the fan blade going through that hole that we had um, for the opening for the duct that we had um, in the previous setup. And so the motor's outside now and the heater is inside, the fan blade's inside and it's pushing air through the, the uh, heater unit. And you can see here we have a thermostat with a thermocouple um, poking through the wall there. And as you can see here we've hit 161 degrees. The goal is uh, to get to 180 degrees and be able to comfortably run that for, you know, like 10-15 hours. Um, so anyway, we kept going, the temperature was still going up. And ultimately you can see here we got to uh, 195 degrees pretty much and I actually had to turn it off because the fan blade was kind of wobbly the way um, we had done just for this test just to get it going. I didn't want to sort of spend too much time if it wasn't going to work but basically mission accomplished getting the temperatures that we wanted. Um, so super happy but still obviously need to make some more tweaks to the whole setup. And meanwhile here the guys are just uh, taking off the uh, peel ply and stuff from uh, that mold for the upper wing skin there. And the next thing is uh, similar to the other ones is to create some uh, braces for that for the stand uh, out of foam and get that glassed into place. So that's the next step uh, for that one. So on to the 3D printing. Uh, this is the first of the uh, ribs and this one actually makes up one that we had to redo uh, for the straight tank. And it's just the front half of what will be the end cap um, for the straight tank and it's just obviously just one side so here you can see the printers going and then uh, creating a bit of a web sort of in the middle there just to add extra strength for when it closes it out and uh, this one took about uh, I think it was about 10 hours 10 to 12 hours to run um, on this pass and I had um, just gotten a PEI layer for the bed uh, to help everything adhere to it and that, that's working out great so super happy about that now and here you can see it's just starting to put the very top on there so uh, that's the first of the ribs printed um, you know from the 3d printer and it's not going to take much to give that a quick sanding and be ready to lay up a mold over that so back to the oven i needed to create a brace uh, to brace that fan so it wasn't going to wobble around and uh, so here I've got a chance to do a little bit of uh, aluminum welding uh, on something that wasn't critical and here's the bracket uh, that I created for that and so that sorted that problem out it's really just super rewarding to be able to, to you know start with the electric um, heater there make some modifications and get it to do exactly what we wanted to do that's really what experimenting is all about uh, anyway segueing here um, this is one of the brackets there for the gear and we just drilled the hole in there with the hole saw and there's the, the bushing that will hold the upper gear mount um, pivot point there and that seat fits nicely in there so we are making progress on those um, brackets as well because they're sort of key in being able to uh, start bonding all the parts of the fuselage together and here you can see I've temporarily bolted the uh, fork onto the nose gear leg and you can see that's looking super nice pretty happy with that, how that turned out and that um, black satin um, powder coat finish we got on there really really looks sharp so really excited about that one and here we've kind of mocked up the three pieces that make up the dash here just so you can get an idea how it all looks. So we've got the lower panel there um, that's in the foreground and then the um, upper sort of underside of the glare shield and then the glare shield on top. And obviously those pieces will actually fit together more snug snugly than that. The panel isn't as high as what it is. It probably comes together so it's only about less than two thirds of that height. Um, but anyway, it's enough room to put um, 14 inch screens without any problem. 
So those obviously still need to be trimmed off, but that gives you an idea of what that panel is going to look like. So here's that first part off the 3D printer, and uh, see it came out pretty nicely. There's a few little things that need just a tiny bit of sanding on there, and you can see the underside. I'm still a bit, um, you know, trying to figure out how to sort of clean up that uh, webbing underneath there. It's so fine that it kind of uh, messes itself up every now and then when it crosses. But anyway, we'll figure that out. Uh, so on to the next half of that, which because that was the front bit, and uh, this is the back bit starting out. So uh, it's going to be a lot of work, and I've actually got this um, just at my place running so I can you know, run it at nights and over the weekends and not have to be at the shop to sort of monitor it. Um, and one last little update on the, uh, on the oven. So what's left on the oven now, we have to get a new um, controller for it because the one that we ordered from China, unfortunately, wasn't working. It just wouldn't even power up. So that's uh, one thing that has to happen there. And then um, we're waiting on another relay. Um, but we should be able to have everything up and running um, and actually be able to bake that main spa uh, hopefully by the end of uh, this coming week. So it's exciting. Uh, anyway, uh, just leave you there seeing uh, more progress on that uh, second rib. That's your update for this week and thanks again for watching.